are interested in running a tensile deformation of a particulate composite of the sort that looks like this, where you show kind of the deformation in tension of this particular composite. So we're applying a load right in front and you're getting this really nice, interesting deformation with a system like this. Of course, you wonder how do you go about doing this? So this is sort of what the geometry of the problem where the dark green region is the matrix, in this case aluminium, and the white regions are the particular composite that show in the system. If we look inside the structure, you can see clearly that the particles are all locked within the structure. And the sort of loading that will generate this result is this sort of loading where the back end are all held securely and the front end is being deformed using a reference point. If this is the sort of thing that you're interested in, then sit back and relax as I show you in detail how to go about setting up this model. So with modeling of particular composite systems, the first challenge you need to deal with is creation of the geometry. And that means creating a representative volume element of the problem with the particles disputed within the microstructure. In this instance, we're going to work with a spherical particulate system. And doing it manually can be very hard. And if you're interested in learning a little bit how you can do this manually, this is a video that I've made in the past that sort of show you how to do this. But I want to show you a software that I've written that sort of will help you in doing this. Please check in the description section of this video of how you can get hold of this software, you know, and how it actually works. So the work software is a MATLAB based software. So currently it runs within a MATLAB environment and this is all what you're going to see. So it's called Gen Particle 3D. So it creates a 3D representative volume element of a particular composite. And so this is sort of how the software will look like. So when you get hold of it, it would have two files in it. So there will be this Gen Particle 3D options, which is a computational options file. And then the main executable, which is a, a P coded file that runs only within MATLAB at the moment. So I've brought over this part and what you're going to see here would be the sort of the command. So it's a computational control deck that controls what's going on with the system. So you can create particular composites, you can create voids, you can create micro capsules like for self-healing composite concrete. But we're going to work on particular composites. I'm going to change a model type, model material type of a particular composite. I'll put that at zero. And the dimensions that we're going to work with will be 10 by 10 by 10 whether it's millimeter or micron, whatever unit you want to work with. In this case, we're working with a micron unit so that the represent volume element will be 10 micron, 10 micron, and 10 microns, and the diameter range. So I'm going to use a monophasic diameter. So all, all the diameters have got to be exactly the same diameter as three microns. Of course, we can also change this to multiple diameters, but in this instance, we're going to make it the same. So because the way the code works, it requires you at least to specify more than one particle diameters for it to then generate what you want. So in this thing, we only have so 33, which indicates that they are the same particle diameters across the bulk. So the volume fraction we're going to work with is a 20% volume fraction for the particulate systems. The particle type will be a type one, which means it's going to be a sphere, although there are options of generating spheroids and ellipsoids, but in this stance, we're dealing with only spheres. So the particle color would be six, which means I'm using the default MATLAB particle display type. Then the, the least space in between the closest particles would be something about this dimension. So just a really very small number to allow for adequate packing within the structure. So the particle phase that we're working with will be a silicon carbide matrix phase, uh, particle carbide. And then the matrix phase would be um, the matrix. In some cases, we can also create interfaces. But in this case, we're not asking for interface. So we're going to leave the interface region for now. So of course, I specify a little bit of the properties of the Young's modulus for the particle is 400 gigapascal, it's Poisson ratio. The Young's modulus of the matrix and it's Poisson ratio. And there's a little bit of other information around here. One thing I want to do here is that I want the RV to trim and show what the internal structure of the architecture. So we've got some fibers, some particles on the edges of the domain. And so what I'm going to ask is, is to trim off about 20% of my original dimensions. I'm working with 10 by 10 by 10. So if you trim off 20%, of it so you're going to get by so you then show what is going on internally within the system so there's a little bit of other computational options that you may want to but the key one we want here is that i'm asking you to trim only 20 percent so that i can reveal what's going on internally within the system so once you specify all that all we then need to do next is to call that structure so if i right click on it and then tell backus to run MATLAB to run. So instantly it will run. And this is sort of the geometry that will show me. So remember this geometry is a geometry of I'm 10 by 10 by 10. However, we are going to trim it down to, to, to size. All these particles are locked within the system and it's generated about a volume fraction of 979. Even though we ask it to generate 20%, it can be quite difficult, especially for this small size RVs 
to generate exactly that. So what we have here is about 19.79, which is approximately 20%. I'm kind of happy with that. So of everything we have here is good and we can go back. So if you go back here, it creates a folder called RVA 10 cube. So if you open that, and open it again so there's a few information that you find here there is a png image of this graphic that we showed earlier on but what really is interesting is here where you're looking at the abacus simulation so if you open that there is then a python script that is generated with this code which we are going to use to bring this result into abacus so let's open it outside of matlab so you can see what is done so basically it's reading a python script and generate some information at the top that also is the usual import create the model and then begin to create all the particles so this is one of the beautiful thing with this script that it has this way of writing a python script automatically for you so you can use it to run your simulation later on so we're going to run this Python script within Abacus as we go ahead with generating our model. So here we are in Abacus. So what we're going to then do is to run that Python script and that we've generated using Gen Particle 3D. So if I do file run script and then I put the location where the information is and then run the particles. So what you will notice is that it will run, created the domain. Now it's got to the point where it's beginning to trim and trim off all the edges resulting in the particular composite that we created using gem particle. So this has brought it into Abacus and we're now in business and we can actually go ahead and run the model. So if we look a little bit around what we have, so also it's created the particles that we are interested in. So there's the particles that we have. So it's, it's created the material structures. If you look here, what we can see under the particle is that this is the full model that we're looking at. It also matched the individual particles before. Um, so that's a different assembly. But what we want now is really we're going to do our analysis based on this. So what I'm going to do is that in the metrics medium, at the moment, it's only allowing me to provide elastic properties. So because we want a bit of plasticity, so I'm going to create a bit of plastic deformation with the system. And so I know that this is aluminum, so it will have a Young's modulus a strength of 250 and then i would like it to have a little bit of post yield behavior so we could do 200 years plus six and zero point maybe zero five maybe 150 eight plus six and zero point two zero and maybe hundred eight plus six and zero point five zero and maybe fifty eight plus six and one point zero zero so some kind of post yield softening in this elastoplastic behavior will be adequate. Of course, you can use other material models if you want, but this is sort of what we want. So if we switch back to material model, so everything looks all right here. So the next thing we then need to do is while still under this, why not let's mesh the model. So if we mesh it, so we accept all the default and then select everything here. And basically I'm going to use a tetrahedron to mesh it. And then I can look at what we have. All right, so we can mesh. So that, yeah, so I'm happy with this mesh. So the sections are all there in the assembly module. So look at it, we've got one instance, which is what we want. So there are a few things I want to do. I want to create a bit of some sets of all the faces of the face that we have here. So if I double click here, so I'm going to make my X front. So with the X front, I want to select the space in front, but I'm going to change it to faces. And then I'm going to change this to by face angle so that I can select everything in the front face. And so that's my X front. So if I switch this back, let's say material, and then I can go back here and say, okay, so we want the X back set. So we have, so we're going to rotate this and select the back face as well. So that's the back face that's done. So we've got the two faces that are of primary importance so the back there but we need to also select other faces so i'm going to create let's say the y base so with the y base the y is the y direction so i'll select that face and then that's done and then the last one will be the x back so if we do the x z back i mean so z back so we select that as well so if we then switch this to sets so we can see what's going on here. So we've identified the set in the front and the three ones at the back. So the other thing we need to also do is that we want to, while still in the assembly module, we're going to create a reference point. So if, before we do that, why not let's query a point here. So the point I'm going to query will be this point. And then it's basically 911. So I'm going to put the reference point just close to it. So the reference point would then be 10, 1, 1. So it would just be a point located close to it, but not exactly next to it. And then I'll create a set for that reference point. So reference point set. 
and so we basically click that so we can create a loading step so static general is good enough for this simulation and then we can create some constraints so i'm going to constrain so let's call it x constraint and we're going to use a star equation to work with that so basically my quotient one and working with the x front degree of freedom one degree of freedom one working with the reference point and then this is minus one if you're interested in learning a little bit more about this concept of egg of constraints look at this video i made that talks a little bit more about this principle for you all right so basically what we've done here is that we've connected this node this the kinematics of this node to that phase so that i can then go ahead and apply my load onto that system so if i just go here and apply a displacement load so i'm going to call it x tensile load all right so i'm going to apply it on that reference point and we are going to apply in the one direction so the system was nine millimeter nine microns in length so if i apply 30 percent strength so that becomes 2.7 so basically the load i'm applying here is transferring directly to this surface to apply the loading in the system so the other things that we then need to just do is to apply boundary conditions so expert ruler okay so select the back which I can highlight to show my back. I'm going to constrain that back in the one direction. And then we we'll do the same Y base roller. So that's the Y base. And then I'm going to constrain it in the two direction. And then the last one will be Z back roller. So that will be the Z back. I'm going to constrain it in the three direction. So what we've done here is that we've sort of modeled like the one eighth of a quadrant of this structure. So we are constraining those back and we're applying our load right in front here and that is how to apply loading on this domain so of course there are a few things that we need to track we need to monitor certain history variables as part of this so what we're going to do is that we go back to our history variables so under history i'm going to say okay my reference point history output okay and i'm going to apply it on the set of the reference point that we've chosen and for our that's our deformation in the one direction. We're going to ask for the action force in the one direction and the displacement in the one direction. And then all we need to do is just to set the model to run. Okay, so now that we've finished setting on the model and this is sort of the result that we're going to generate from this. So that shows you this deformation of the system. So if we look at the plastic strain, so it does show you clearly where the plastic deformation is building up in the model and you can see the fibers in their place. You can also see the very uneven deformation in the system. So I can also take out the future edges so that all we, we can focus solely on on the deformation so you can see what is going on in the structure so it's really a nice deformation where everything is happening as expected the particles being rigid not deforming because they're elastic and then the matrix experiencing a lot of the deformation and the behavior of the matrix obviously influencing how the shape comes out in the end and this is a real true representation of the formation for a particulate composite system so one thing we can also do here is to hide so if I take this and say, okay, I want to remove the material and then select just the particles. So that shows only the metrics here. So what we see here is the stress history only on the metric. And these are sort of the interesting things that you can do with this sort of simulation, because then you begin to show some really interesting behavior of how the particular composite is deforming under the effect of loop. I mean, we can also look at the deformation. And if you look at the deformation, it does show, okay, there is a bit of finite deformation in this region and in that region um, because maybe there's a freedom of particle movement around there so this region is contracting excessively but of course what we want to do with this is to generate some stress strain data from this result and we can quickly do that so if we go on to this and so okay, i want to operate on the history output so remember we've already asked it to give us some values so the rf1 and u1 is what we want and then we can plot that and right away you can see an excellent plot showing you the reaction force and the displacement from that data now what we're going to do with this that we're going to extract that data so we go to plugins tools excel utility here and tell the, the current plot to export that into excel so that we can take that data and manipulate within excel for our own purpose okay so this is sort of what we have here so the first column is always the time column then you get reaction for time column displacement so we're going to just select all of that so i copy that i've already prepared a template that you can use to guide you in the analysis so let's look at that so that's the template so i'll just put in the data that we 
if I copy and paste it in here, so like I said, there is time reaction force in the one or x axis, time displacement one or x axis, and then it comes up with a plot like this. So the other thing we then need to do the length of the RV was 999, nine, nine. and then we can then look at how do you predict the Young's modulus. The Young modulus is predicted as basically the slope of the elastic region in the system, which is what we see as here. So the strength is predicted as the absolute maximum of the stress in the region and it comes up at 252 megapascal so if we then look at a bit of a comparison of the plot so you sort of see what we have here so what i've really been interested in is what do these numbers mean in terms of the real implication of them and so yes effective modulus numerically has been predicted but how does that compare with let's say experimental data unfortunately we don't have any experimental data here but we can look at some analytical prediction of a particular composite its effective properties in terms of yields strength the strength is not a problem because with micro scale simulations the strength is usually limited by the strength of the matrix and i know that the matrix in this case is aluminium it has a strength of 250 megapascal so analytically or oh, data input into the system should be around 250 so this is comparable to 50 what numerically we are getting is equivalent to what we put into the model and so that is working fine what we are not sure of is this one so what i have done is if you think about how do you then predict properties of a particular composite so let's look at this so basically this is a classic you know helping side equation and this is a, a reformulation of it that it sort of still works for us to use so if we look at this equation so what we have here is that ec is the modulus of the composite em is the young modulus of the matrix in this case aluminium vp is the volume fraction of the particle vm is volume fraction of the matrix in this case aluminium and then these two parameters are basically the factor the first one is the shear factor related to the geometry of the reinforcing particles while the other one is the orientation factor so if we look a little bit more for a, spher a spherical particle system that is dispensed with an aluminium matrix randomly zeta in this case being the shear factor for spherical particles is usually as accepted to be 0 0.5 which indicates you know isotropic reinforcement so every direction of the system is isotropically reinforced because of the sphere and then the other parameter here is typically assume one because of this random orientation of particles within the system so this will be different if you're looking at um, unidirectional composite where there's a predefined direction of orientation in this instance is one and we're happy okay so putting on the parameters that we had at the beginning so what we have here are the young's modulus values so this is the helping side shape factor and the orientation factor 0 0.5 and 1 so I went on to use this classic rule of mixture to try and predict these values and what we find is giving us 142 which is probably not ideal considering that we're getting 112 as our data the inverse rule of mixture is another thing that is accepted for this kind of prediction but again it's more suited for fiber reinforced composites so it gave us around 90 megapascal which is again closer to 112 but still okay but then with the happy side that we talked about we made a prediction with that so i plugged in all these values and we are getting 112 megapascal there's also another model called cca model or another model which i tried to use but it wasn't giving us the right prediction so the happy side works quite well and so what we see here is that even analytically we're predicting something comparable what numerically we also got and this shows to the beauty the, uh, the excellence of this micro mechanical approach where it gives you accurate prediction of the strength as well as accurate prediction of the young's modulus so if you're interested in doing this manually in a more extensive way where you not only look at the tensile behavior but also share behavior and other form of behavior then this is a video for you to look at thank you for interest in this channel and i'll see you in the next video bye bye <music>